one. Um, I am going to make a champ rock card and I have this idea. Um, I don't know. This isn't exactly it. So this is my sketch. I've got a couple different things going on here. I'm definitely, this is a very bad drawing of a shamrock. I'm not, definitely not an artiste, right? But that's okay. Um, and then I've got, so the, I've got a really cool, pretty pink posh shaker die. I'm going to use a shaker die. And then I have this really pretty lucky um, die that I'm going to use. And then I'd like to put something right here that says to be your friend. The background, I've got a couple different ideas. I'm either, I was thought about using paper strips as my background, like shamrock, or shamrock, uh, green and white, which I'm out of green, so I can't do that. I thought about rainbow colors. Um, then I thought green and white with gold splatter or maybe or then i've got or use rainbow oh and then on the back of my this shamrock use rainbow blended ink on white background of clover so i don't know i'm gonna start with the clovers and start gluing those together to start working on my shakers i guess i'm gonna start there and then i might do some ink blending I might also use, you know, maybe a, maybe a stencil, you know, that would be cute. I saw a card like that too. I was just trying to do something a little different than what somebody else did. So, um, even though I'm, you know, taking my own spin on it. So I might skip the stripes and then maybe just do a, you know, a kind of framed kind of deal right because i am going to go get some green this weekend and then i could do you know this is white and maybe the card is green i don't know i think what we're going to do is we're just going to get started and we're going to see how it all turns out so that's what i'm going to do so i just kind of wanted to get started i've already started a little bit of cutting um but i'm going to get the rest of the cutting done off camera um yeah and then we'll continue we'll get started so let's have some fun and make a card all right welcome back everybody um i had done most of my die cutting off camera but i did want to show you that i'm using a different tabletop um, die cutter this is diamond press it comes with instead of regular plates like your other one like your regular die cutters it comes with these little plastic folders now the thing i'm not crazy about with the plastic folders is they bend a lot but they you can use them for a while and what i did really like about this is that it was really easy to use it suctions to my tabletop and it does not hurt my arm to um uh, to to run the plastic folders through and it cut really well even on a really used um, Plastic folder like that. I actually bought they come in like 10 packs And so I bought like 20 of them. So I have quite a few I like to take this camping because it really does um, Travel pretty well. So that was kind of the idea so here I am just um, gonna stack my dice. So I wanted to use the gold lucky um, but then I went ahead and cut a few more layers in just scrap white material or paper um, to go ahead and um, use uh, to stack those dies and put the gold on top of the lucky. So um, I am going to make two cards. So that's what happens here. And you'll get to see a little bit of both on here. Um, and so, yeah, so I use my tweezers to kind of put uh, to not squish them together to line things up that's the right that that's how I put things together um a lot of people will use because I'm using liquid glue right um and you can kind of wiggle them into place um but I have a harder time with that for some reason so um but just fine so I like my tweezers work well for me um they do not yeah they haven't disappointed so here I'm doing the other ones um this almost looks like I'm so we're continuing um, to do some gluing here. I really like this die. So later on, you'll see that I go ahead and um, I do use the shadow layer. 
comes with a shadow layer. I did it on the first card, but I did on the second card. Um, you'll see that as we move forward. So uh, a little bit off camera here, I apologize. So, uh, but yeah, those just I'm just trying to get things into place and the tweezers work well for me. So, and these are just really cheap, like a cheap, cheaper, uh, less expensive set um, I've gotten on Amazon. I have multiple sets. So uh, using my brick there to get, you know, to get my, you know, every, make sure everything is stuck down the way it should be. When I'm doing small die cuts like this, um, I do glue everywhere. <laughs> so I always have the handy wipes uh, handy. <laughs> and then a paper towel, of course. So I have a little cart next to me that has a paper towel holder. It's kind of got all my card stuff on it. Um, I recently got a chair that rolls. So I love that because I can just quickly turn around and get a marker or an ink pad or whatever. And I don't have to... Um, because it was just a regular dining room chair before. So it is really nice. So um, I'm just excited about getting that little extra piece for my, um, just continuing to make my craft room the way I want it. Craft rooms, I technically have two, two and a half if you want to count my area in the garage. I think I'm going to do a uh, craft room tour here soon. Um, and I'm going to do that because I there's a possibility that I might uh, make some nice upgrades to the dining room portion. Um, so we'll see. Um, but then that way I have kind of a before and after. That's the idea. All right. So we're getting close to being done here with my um, greetings. So not sure what I'm doing off camera here. Okay. And here we are just finishing up the last of my sentiments or my my sentiment for the front of the card. Um, sorry, a little off frame. I'm still getting used to the video and how I, you know, get everything all settled, but that's, yeah, we're getting there. So I had some glue on the front, so I used a little paper towel and I was just trying to, I guess, squish the glue out. <laughs> uh, so I could make sure it was cleaned up. I didn't want it on that gold, you know, uh, because it's a, it's shiny and that you would, even though the glue dries clear, I just felt like you could see it. So I didn't want that. So cleaning up my workspace a little bit here, getting all that glue, dry it off. It does also very much get onto um, your tweezers. So definitely um, keeping things all clean and tidy. Um, so yeah, look at how cute that is. I love it. And so I is just trying to get all that glue off there so it doesn't show up. Okay, now we're gonna start assembling the shaker. So I um, I did this two different ways, and I believe that I filmed both, we'll see. One way I used the, uh, I used foam strips to create my shaker well, and the other one, I actually used multiple die cuts to build it up. I will say that I liked the multiple die cuts a lot um, because you couldn't, if you looked down, not that anybody's going to be looking at it like that, you just can see the shaker, or excuse me, the foam strips. And when you use multiple die cuts to build up the well, um, you don't see that. So I really liked that. So unfortunately, I was a little off camera here. I went to go cut something, it appears. So um, yes. Okay, so what I did off camera here um, was cut some extra, um, some extra backs, I think. And then, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry, off camera. Can you see me like not have this in frame? So I cut the um, acetate and I used so I could make the window of my shaker. So it doesn't cut well for me. I haven't quite figured out mastered the mastered that um but anyway um so i just use my scissors to snip it out the right way it's fine it you know you can see it just a tiny but i didn't get it quite the way i wanted it to but you know what i don't know that anybody but me would notice so it's fine so i did i think i cut both at the same time even though i kind of made one card at a time so 
Um, so just snipping out my acetate here using my scissors. Um, I did get some new acetate. So the stuff I was using before was from Michael's. I got some other stuff from Amazon that was cut in smaller sheets. It is clearer. Um, I did like it. So uh, I think it was from Amazon. Anyway, but you know, acetate is acetate. I There's some really good stuff from Simon Says Stamp that I think I'd like to buy um, the next time. So yeah, but anyway. Um, yeah, so putting all my things back. So I don't know if I've ever talked about what I use to store my stamp or my dies. So what I do is I have, there's some pockets. I buy these plastic pockets from Amazon. And then I actually, for now, until I get fancier, I buy these magnetic dust covers from Lowe's. They come in a three pack and I cut them into three pieces and then I can then cut them um, to whichever size of envelope I'm using. I'm typically just using, um, there's like a middle size and I don't have the name of what that is off the top of my head here as I'm doing my voiceover, so I apologize, um, but they work really well. So, um, and you know, and they're not as, they're not expensive to where if I ruined one, it would be terrible. I do put once in a while, I get a new set or something. And I, if there's some, some that come through Amazon or with the sets on Amazon and they're nice pockets. So I was like, Ooh, I'd like to get some of those, but I'm sure they're more expensive. They're much more durable um, and thick. I currently am using those to house my better press dies. So, um, so now I am, um, gluing on the acetate. So I glue the acetate to one of the um, outlines there, or the die cuts. Um, and then what I'm doing is the I had cut additional of those die cuts and putting them on the back. So for the first one, I utilized using a using the foam tape, and then for the second one, I just continue to stack on the layers of that outline. That is not the right word, but that outline of, um, of the shaker dies. So um, that, that, which this is what creates the well um, for my shaker. So um, I'm using Barely Arts glue. That is my definite favorite glue. Um, I did just purchase a glue press. So um, I find I have a little bit of a challenge squeezing the bottle sometimes because I've got some weird hand issues. And um, I've just been listening to some of my favorite YouTuber creators and um, they find that that's helpful. So I'm gonna try it. You know, it's worth it. I think it'll be really great. So anyway, um, so yeah, so look at that. We're getting things going there. Super cute. I just love this shamrock. So um, I realize I probably should have had this video out a little bit sooner than right now because it's literally St. Patty's Day weekend, but you know, that's okay. That is totally fine. So that's just the way it goes. So just, and, and here I was snipping off the, um, extra acetate because I didn't cut it exactly right. And my die cut didn't cut it. Now, this is my other challenge I'm still trying to get used to. I get glue all over everything. So I use my little handy wipes and I tried to wipe the glue off my acetate. I don't know what the right answer is. I know some people use like a thin double-sided tape and that would be great, right? I think that would be good. Um, I also was thinking like a Xyron sticker maker might work, you know? So anyway, um, yeah, so well, I'm not sure why my phone's in frame there, but it is. So I, I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I holding my phone and trying to play with my, oh, I was taking a picture. Yeah, I like to take the picture, um, just in case if I'm coming back to it later. So I kind of remember what I was doing, even though that's not what I ended up doing. So here using my waffle flower grip mat, I've decided to do a rainbow background. So I showed you all of the colors there in rainbow order, what I'm gonna do. Trying to decide if I was gonna go straight across or diagonal. Um, I went with straight across um, and I used my small blending brushes. 
I got those on Amazon and honestly, I cannot tell you how much I loved how this turned out. It was so pretty. I just, I love it. I still look at it and I'm just like, I love, I love the background. This is probably the best blending I've ever done. You know, it takes, it's challenging, right? You know, so, um, yeah. So anyway, so, um, it, it looks really, really good. I just, I just really love it. And I went ahead and I'm using Lumberjack Plaid. Then I did some Carved Pumpkin. Now I'm pulling in, opening up the Squeezed Lemonade. Um, that's bright, but it looks beautiful on there. I just, yeah, I really like it. So, um, and I've got like a little, my palette of extra over there to the side. And I come back to that, which is really nice because I kind of blend them. I do this and then I blend them back out. So now I go back with my carved pumpkin and kind of blend that back into the orange. And then I'll go back with the red at some point and put more of the lumberjack plaid on the top so it's a little more vibrant. So now this is Rustic Wilderness. Um, it's, this is, I think it's my favorite green. It's really pretty. It's a good green. I did buy Lucky Clover just for this project, but I didn't like it for this. I really liked this and it matched the green a little more, I guess, to what I was doing or, you know, the green um, cardstock that I was using. Yeah, so I just blend it in to the next one. This is Salty Ocean, another really pretty blue. So I blend it up each time into the other one and then I come back down with that color from before to just kind of blend it back together. You know, you kind of want that ombre effect. That's what I was going for was a little bit of an ombre effect. And you know, the thing is, is these dry back so differently. Um, it's just really amazing, actually. Um, this is chipped sapphire. So it's almost a purpley blue. Um, at least that's what it looks like there on my little screen it looks a little more blue but um it's it it was beautiful it per, it worked perfect these colors looked great together um it kind of drowned out the salty ocean a little bit so um i do kind of try to go back and fix that but it's all right and then this is wilted violet so using wilted violet as my last per, last color in the rainbow there so um so now I'm going back and I'm using some of my other colors and I'm just, so here's the salty ocean, just trying to bring back some of that brighter blue. It doesn't do the greatest job. That was the one that wasn't as much, you know, and then just trying to use the brushes with what's left on them to blend things out. But it looks really good. That definitely, I, I brightened up that red on the top. So that, I loved it. It looked so good. I really do like the way the back turned out. Um, I just use a baby wipe to clean my waffle flower grip mat. So then I was all done. All right, then I was all done with the one. Um, I, I obviously didn't show me filling the shaker. I'm not sure what happened there, um, but that's okay. So what I had done was I built it up with foam tape and I filled the shaker. I can't believe I missed that. I think this was the one where I missed part of it. Um, I also found some really cute um, paper in my stash. Um, and that's, it's very small little shamrocks. I cut some green from, at this point I had gone back to Michael's to get more green because <laughs> I really needed that color. And I'm just using my smaller die cut machine um, this ended up not working out. I ended up having to get a new piece of green and I think I went and cut it at the on the big spellbinders. It just, I don't know what happened, but it it's fine. I need a machine that will do this because I do like to take my crafts camping. So maybe it did work. I can't recall now. We'll find out here in just a second. So yeah. Oh, see, it was all askew. See how I did that? I was so mad. Um, so anyway, that's fine. Um, so I go do the same thing and I just go do that over at my big machine. I save, that's mint tape. I buy that from scrapbook.com and I use that tape until there is no more tape, no more stick left to it. Um, or, oh yeah, maybe I just do, do, I thought I went to my spellbinders. That's okay. Um, I think it's fine as long as you get it in there. I needed to. 
I needed two pieces of tape. So it's all good. So anyway, um, yeah, so back to the shaker. So I built that up with the foam tape and then I used a very pretty um, glitter from the glitter guy. Um, and it, it's a great, great one. It's called Float, Floating Lanterns. Um, so it's a chunky mix. I'll have it linked down below. Um, I heard a little rumor, not a little rumor because it's a big rumor and it's going to come true sometime here in April that uh, Glitter Guy Glitter will be sold at, at um, Hobby Lobby, which is wonderful. They have great glitter. Their prices are really good. I've used Glitter Guy for a really long time um, as I do cups. So, um, yeah. So now we're, this is me, I believe, working on the second one because my first one, um, my first one was completed as far as the shaker and all that good stuff. So um, getting things glued on, you can see I have a whole bunch of uh, outlines there. And that's still not the right word, but um, you get the drift, right? Um, just trying to get things all lined up and I will get those glued. You can see my background there over to the, my left and I'll continue to glue these on um, and make a really nice well. Um, I did cut some other shamrocks. I have a couple of really cute um, things from Pretty Pink Posh that I had gotten in this particular release, but I didn't use them all. So, you know, that's there's, there's next year, right? So I've got to get busy and start working on maybe an anniversary card and I've got Easter, which is like next week. So, We'll see how much I get done. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that looks really good. So, yep, I just keep building it up. I like it with the paper. I think it's sturdier. Um, the whole shaker was definitely sturdier. I don't know um, if anyone saw my short that I did um, with the shaker. That was the first one, actually. But um, this one is just, it's just so much more substantial. It doesn't squish or as much anyway, I guess that's it. So I really do, I don't know, I like the paper. I think I'm gonna do more of that, you know. As I said in one of my more recent videos, you know, who doesn't have a whole lot of paper? Um, at this point, I got a Q-tip out to help clean the glue off because I had glue on my acetate and um, it just makes a mess. Um, and you have to be, I have a very fine tip on there, but um, sometimes I think it needs to be finer. I think the glue press one is pretty fine, so I'm pretty excited about trying that out. So um, that'll hopefully be here sometime this week. All right, so I had to, you know, I had to uh, let these kind of, uh, excuse me, not kind of, I had to let these, you know, adhere in between, make sure that they were all um, getting glued on. So this took a little bit of time. Um, in hindsight, I should have done everything at the same time. So I'll get better at this. And I know this is, this is probably the longest video that I've had. So it is a little long. So I apologize for that. Um, but these were really fun cards to make. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't send them out. I should have. So I guess I'll send them out next year. Um, but if you look at the sentiments that I end up choosing for the inside, they're not necessarily St. Patrick's Day. They're very friend related. So I have a wonderful friend that I really want to send one of these to and I'm hoping she'll like it. So back to the first one here and we're gonna go ahead, cause that other one's drying, we're gonna get this one put together. Well, we're gonna start. Um, I have my aqua pig, aqua gilded, aqua, pigment gilded. I always get it out of order. Um, from Brutus Monroe. It'll be linked down below. I love it. I just got the silver one. So that'll be fun to try too. And, um, I am going to put some splatter on that scrap card stock on that, you know, from my stash with the little clovers. I thought that would be fun. And here I'm trying to decide what's going to be my sub sentiment or my inside sentiment. I wanted this to say, lucky to be your friend but i did not have i didn't have a stamp set that said that um so and i didn't have a stamp set really to put it together 
Although I think in hindsight, I could have made that work. You know, you can just mask off part of your stamp and then, you know, stamp some words together. So I probably could have and then use like a sentiment strip to cut it out. Um, but in the end, I do like what I chose. I think it's great. So this is my splat box. I went ahead and that has that uh, Brutus Monroe um aqua pigment gilded I think that's what it's called it has like a eyedropper so I just drop some into a little medicine cup I have a ton of those because I use them with my epoxy and I used my fan brush and I just splattered it on there I all right here I actually am showing the floating lanterns this is me filling my so this is the one that I created with a bunch of uh, paper versus the foam tape again loved it so much better so this is the floating lanterns glitter from simon's or excuse me glitter guy and then i use my little triangle trays to kind of fill it um and then i'm using my barely arts glue and i am going to put that really pretty um rainbow background see how that dried back it looks so dried back dry i think that's the right word um anyway i just love the way it looks i think it looked really pretty and just mm, you could make I love shakers I think they're really fun I feel like I'm getting better at them um which is good and then there was like little hairs paper hairs all over the place so just saving every ounce of glitter I can so but this was a good one that was perfect for it I have so much glitter I'll show my glitter wall when I do my um craft room tour so um yeah so looking really good and um oh and now I'm gonna begin assembling the card this is so great so i am gonna do a top folding card um so my paper is 11 by four and a quarter and then i score that at five and a half i used my ek success tool i think that's what they're called and um and then i used a, a different bone folder to make sure that i really get a good nice a, a nice crease on that um, so I'm going to begin assembling the first card here. And this is the green paper that I had to go to Michael's for. I decided to double, to give it a double, um, a double frame. I, I, I wanted to bring out some of that gold because you can, it helps bring out the splatter. Um, because the splatter that's on my, you, you almost can't see it now that I'm looking at this again, but the gold helps bring it out. So, and you can see it right there in the light. So, you know, you just gotta, it's very subtle, but I really like it. So here I'm trying to figure out uh, my placement and how I want it to look. Um, I do this over and over and over again, just to try to figure it out, you know? Um, and I, I typically only have um, a white, a white dove and a black and, and maybe a mm, craft, for my 110 pound, that's the background. I actually think it's 100 pound, whatever, 100, 110, that I use as my actual card base. I want a nice sturdier base. So this is what I went with and you can tell. So I'm um, using my Hero Arts uh, rectangular infinity dies here so that I can get the right cut. I wanted them, um, you know, just kind of nestled or nested you know, very, just a very thin border. And it turns out really nice. I do, I do like the way it turns out. So, um, on that one, so using the barely art, I could have used my glue tape. Um, I kind of feel like I wish I would have, um, but something I was thinking about as I'm, if I'm storing these cards or, um, I do vendor shows, right? And I didn't send these out. I, I intended to, but I didn't. And I might just save these for um, my show. I'm going to have one July, the weekend that July 4th happens on a Wednesday, but I think that it's on the weekend. Um, so I might save them for that. And I feel like the glue is going to hold up longer than the glue tape. Glue tape tends to lift over time. Um, at least the stuff I used to use all the time when I was scrapbooking. And I just feel like that's, I don't know that it's changed that much. And maybe it was the brand. I don't know. So I, I like using glue tape. So it'll be nice to have the new glue press. And I think it'll be easier um, for me to use it. And, and 
And yeah, I really like it. So still getting the little tiny hairs off. It's funny, when you use your die cut machine, it creates little paper hairs. So I use my little tweezers to, to get those off of there. Oh, had to, I had the remote out. Oh, I was changing the channel. Probably watching a craft video, possibly a movie. Yeah, that tends to be my go-to when I'm crafting. Um, probably part of the reason I like to do a voiceover is because then I can just craft. I mean, I do talk during the video, um, but this would have been two hours long. Um, so I hope to get a little better um, because that would be my preference because it does take a little longer for editing and um voiceovers and all of that but you know i got life happening here you know i've got two kids and a dog and a husband and you know um i i get very few hours to really do this so i kind of have to sneak it in so um my kids are playing on their phones right now and my husband is going to make dinner which is going to be amazing so i'm super excited so just getting things glued down i think this looked really good i love them both they both turned out really good so um i like the lucky uh i really like that font a lot you know it's just pretty so it's just different i mean i've used my cricut for years um and in an upcoming video i do use my cricut because there's something i don't have so um i went ahead and create you know i used a cricut design for it so that was fine so there was real quick i'll backtrack there um that is something that i showed on my last haul video and it's where i keep all my little embellishments so what i did was i pulled out these flat backed gold pearls um i got mine on amazon it is a big a lot of them um definitely there are probably better quality and ones that other people sell simon says stamp a, a bunch of different ones probably on scrapbook.com and then the various other folks that you know um i know like Pretty Pink Posh probably has them and all of that. So, but I bought a big package, you know, I was trying to be economical as I'm starting this out, starting out on this card adventure journey. Um, so it had a lot. So um, anyway, yeah, oh, it's pretty blurry. I don't know what happened there. Sorry about that. It's just not, I do have to get a new camera. That's pretty blurry. Maybe it's my eyes, but it's pretty blurry. But darn it. I have to remember that when I do those next time. Anyway, just trying to get my placement. So something I learned from um, some of the, my favorite YouTube creators is, you know, kind of using odd numbers. Um, so, you know, I did a placement of three and I actually didn't follow it. There's one, one that has three, one that has two, and one that has two. So, but it was an odd grouping, you know, a grouping of in three different places um, but it looks fine and you know what and honestly you can do what you want I think it's fine if you want an even number you can do that um, I think it just has to look good but I do believe that there is some logic to that you know the placement and the number you know there's definitely something about odd numbers so um, I don't know what that is I wish I did I am not that kind of I don't have those kinds of expertise, but I did what I thought looked good. I used my um, Gina K tool there because I had replaced my tip on that. Um, and then this is me shaking it. It's kind of hard to see because I did, went ahead and um, sped this up a little bit, but it's so pretty. I love the background. That turned out, I, I the background of my shamrock, shamrock, I love it. It turned out really good. So here I'm trying to decide which I decided I couldn't put something on the front because it wasn't what I wanted. So I went ahead and picked something for the inside. And this was from a CZ Design stamp set from um, about friends. And it said, there's good friends, there's better friends, then there's you. And I thought that looked out really, worked good. Okay, now we're moving in to number two. So I lost the video. Or no, I didn't lose the video. 
it my I'm have I have challenges. We'll just say I have technology challenges. I went ahead and cut all of those paper strips and I glued them onto a back. And I did it in rainbow order. I thought it would be really pretty and I, I just really loved it. So I went ahead and cut the lucky in vellum the shadow layer i did that in vellum and i love the way that turned out now the shamrock that you have that i have on there that's the one with the foam tape so remember i'm not going to do that again i it doesn't look terrible but i i'm not going to do that again so i'm i'm going to go ahead or and i'm going to glue the gold lucky onto that shadow layer in vellum and if it's right on there and it's not super thick you know you won't see through it and then the really nice part is that here in a minute when I glue that on I just put my glue right behind where the actual lucky is so you can't um you you won't see it because you can see glue through vellum it doesn't dry clear you can you can tell so you just got to be careful when you're using vellum another really neat trick now if I hadn't have stacked hadn't have stacked up the lucky on this one what I could have done is just glued the lucky gold on there glued it to the to the vellum and then I could have used those extra layers on the back of the vellum and could have stacked it up that way. And then the vellum, it was kind of, it would be kind of sitting on top. Would have been really cool, but I didn't know that's what I was going to do when I first started out. So I don't want it to be too bulky because I, I did intend to mail these, but you know, now they're not going to be mailed, but maybe they will be. We'll see. So I did use glue tape here um, because I just said, you know why not this is scrapbook.com dotted glue tape i do really like this this is not the same glue tape that i used in my past life so um, i don't know how that holds or not so using the same um same dimensions for my card base also top folding and i use my little uh brick to kind of hold it down flat because i don't have a magnet glass board or anything like that and then here I'm also then, you know, thinking ahead, what am I gonna put on the inside? Um, it was really tough. I wanted to use the same thing and I just didn't find something that worked. Um, I still don't love what I did because it didn't stamp well. So um, there is definitely something to be said for quality stamps, right? Um, I have bought a lot of kind of cheaper knockoff kind of stuff as I've gotten started in my card making adventure and I noticed I noticed a real difference in the quality of the stamps and how they stamp so this is this one I'm using here I I don't know it came I got it somewhere on the internet Amazon I don't know not that Amazon has bad stuff but I'm just talking about I don't know it they were very thin really really thin and then you'll see me i think i show it here um how i ink that up over and over and over again to try to get a good impression and i still didn't get a good impression i just had to go for it really um but i used this you know i was i was testing it but i do like what i put it says hi friend your friendship means the world to me and I think it's really cute. It's just the way it's stamped some of the, you have to be really careful when you're using delicate word stamps. You need to be very light, very, um, and not press too hard. And if the stamps aren't real quality, that can be a challenge. Maybe it was me. I am not saying that it wasn't, right? Um, but it, it could have been. And then also they were new stamps, so I went ahead and conditioned them to try to get the manufacturer coating off of them. So you just really just rub them um, with your fingers or whatever, just to, it just gets a, there's a film. And you can even see how it's stamped on there or how the ink held it in those certain spots. And I could really never get away from it. So, um, but I tried it multiple times. You will see me multiple, multiple times. Um, I'm using my favorite black inky ink. So it is um, Versifying Claire in Nocturne. And it's a really, it's a good color. I, in the other one, I ended up using um, gold embossing powder. And I do like the way that looks. This is great, but then I didn't really have any black on there. But I, I couldn't have embossed that. It would have, 
it just wouldn't have looked, that stamp just wasn't going to stamp the way I wanted it to. But that's okay. It's pretty. I like it. It's fine. Um, so just doing some practicing, I would definitely suggest that this is good if you're trying to get it right um, or if your stamp's not stamping the right way. So this also, all this work here I'm doing conditions the stamp as well. So that's good. Um, so it should be well conditioned, but I don't know that I'm ever going to use it again. <laughs> so I really got frustrated. The hay friend worked fine, um, but the, I, it needed a sub sentiment, you know, so it's fine. I, you know, I think I've got to, I'll find the one that I really want because I like that idea that it said lucky to be your friend. Um, <laughs> there I was crossing my fingers that it was going to work. I just said, screw it. I'm going to go for it. So I did. And here I am. No, I could tell that it was going to. So I've just, uh, it's hard. So there I go. I'm just going for it. Just a quick press real quick in the middle. It's got to be good enough. That's, that's just, it has to be. Thankfully, it wasn't uneven, you know. It's not terrible, but that first couple letters of the subs, the, the, in that sentiment on the inside, it just didn't, it's dark. You can see it even, even in my blurry camera that I will someday, again, on my list, on my Christmas list for next year. <laughs> but it's still cute. I do like it. I think it's fine. So... All right, so um, I am using some alcohol to clean up the ink off of my Misty. So I tend to try to clean my Misty every so often because um, it does get really dirty. I also use the, the alcohol, I have this, those little bottles that are from the dollar store, to clean my um, glass mat and all that good stuff too. So I like to clean as I go for the most part. Um, so there is what it looks like. So hey, you know, it's, it's all right. It's not terrible at all. It, you know, it could be worse. It's, you know, it's, it's better than horrible. I think Gina K, they, that's what they say, um, on hers. I think that's what they, what they say. So I'm with that. So here I am. I'm going to get everything, um, put on this one. I do like the, um, the background with the different, um, colors. Now I could have done different sizes of strips, but mm, I'm that, that would have made me a little anxious. So everything kind of had to be the same. I did cut those just with my paper trimmer. I do have a strips sent a uh, strips die and I tried that, but it just didn't cut through and I don't know. So I'm sure it was the operator. So here you can see what I was talking about earlier. I just put glue on the part where the die cut, you know, the, the lucky die cut was so that you wouldn't see it. I am using my reverse tweezers so that I can make sure that things are, so that I get it on there nice and even. So um, that is helpful. I use, I use those, you know, half the time. It just depends. So, and then I'm going to get my, my, my uh, shamrock glued on there. Super cute. So, Oh, the glue, pla glue, glue press will be really nice for this, I think. So yeah, just like that. Get that glued on. Uh, they're both really similar, kind I mean similar. They're a little different, but you know. Baby wipes, getting the glue off my reverse tweezers there. So, and my glue top. So it does kind of build up. So you just want to make sure you keep that nice and clean. So that's what I do, so. I love it. I love the shakers. I think it's really cute. So I don't know. It's fine. It's good. All right. So here I am with the flat backed golds. These are my current favorite thing to use. I really like them. Um, and just try, I like the small ones. So I have these big ones. <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably end up with a lot of big ones, but I like the smaller, more dainty looking ones. Um, there's, there's like three different sizes, maybe four different sizes in there. Um, but yeah, that's just real cute. So, yeah. And they, they, they shake really well. I'm, I'm doing, this is, I don't know, at least a week later and I'm playing with it now and, and they shake really well. I think it's really pretty. So that's a good glitter. It's a good gold glitter. I'll, I'll definitely continue to use that. It just gives off with those different colors in the background. I think it's really pretty. 
So here on this one, I did three groupings of two is what I did. So, which made sense. So that other one I did a little different, but you know what? It's fine. Who cares? It's fine. You do you. You do what you want to do. Like this is just here for you to get inspired by. I was inspired by others um, that did something similar to these. Um, mine are a little different, you know, but I definitely took my inspiration from somebody else. You know, um, there are some recent cards that I literally copied the package on, like the um, with the, the envelopes and stuff. If you saw those more recently, which I love, those are so cute. Um, anyway, um, that would be cute with some clovers coming. I mean, there's just a lot you can do with everything. So just trying to take something. I always typically like to do it the way I kind of saw it or the way the packaging did. And then I go and do something different with it. That's typically what I like to do, um, but it depends, you know? So, um, and this is my cards. This is how they look. They turned out really good. I hope you enjoyed making these cards with me today. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I can't wait to make another card with you soon. Mm -hmm.